And welcome to Larry's Country. Oh, Diner. yeah. Oh, and we got a show for you today. We're going to have a good time. We you are. ready for a good time? I think everybody's ready for a good time. Anyway, here is the man who leads the pack here, and I'm so proud of him. You, you just don't know what a success story he is. He Thank was you. Thank totally you. addicted. Achilles, Mike. He was totally <laughs> addicted to the hokey pokey, and then he stood up and turned himself around. It's amazing. That's Larry. What? Isn't that a dumb song? Yeah. Dude, you put your left foot in, you put your left foot out, yeah. you put your shake it all about. Do the they, hokey did, pokey. they used to make us do that when we were in the first and second grade. Yeah. Turn wow. yourself around. Well, I didn't even know my body parts then. That's all, that's all. <laughs> oh, I had trouble with that left and right stuff. I still do. <laughs> did you, know you, get... how to, you know how to, I know how to put my finger on the right hand. There was a jeweler in My town. fingers come attached to my hand. Oh, okay. No, my, my, my wedding ring. Oh, okay. Yeah. There was a jeweler in Nashville for the longest time, and, and part of the jingle was, third finger of your left hand. So I, I remember that. Okay, third finger. Left hand. Okay, yeah. There we go. I'm ready to go. <laughs> you know, She's we, just shaking her head. like. We have Darren and Brooke Aldridge with oh, us today. Oh, yes. And we are going to right over there. They're great. <clears throat> and we're going to get to them in just a minute. But before we do, Lee Groich, come here. And somebody's got a microphone going to give him. Lee Groich, this, this guy, we, we call him our fourth son. Mm -hmm. I've known Lee since he was 19. I was a youth pastor. And now I'm 19 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I was a youth pastor in Rochester, New York, and Lee came to town to spend with some friends and uh, wound up getting to know him quite well. Would you bring that thing in that you made for the colonel? Will do. And this, of course, is Colonel Littleton. Yes. Yes. Right the there. great yes. Colonel Littleton. I get nervous when Larry Black calls me and says, come to the diner, I got a surprise. <laughs> so, I don't so I'm vulnerable here. You're vulnerable. Vulnerable. Uh-oh, Mike didn't work. Is it working? Oh. All right, cool. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> Colonel Littleton makes the greatest leather products in the world. And you can go to ColonelLittleton.com. But he was also in one of the first 13 shows we did um, had, had him, I just, I love the leather stuff. And, uh, Lee just started making chairs and I said, Lee, why don't you make one for the Colonel? And I did. And, uh, I had a blast. Um, and the main thing is it's, it's sort of to honor the American made sort of thing that's going on. And, uh, years ago, you used to have to go out in the world and sell your wares. Now you can bring the world to you. And, uh, and I've been a fan of his philosophy of making things, taking raw materials and having hand tools and creating something and uh, that makes an impression because of the quality and just the vision of what he's done and, uh, and just being able to express um, himself in a medium, you know, being created in God's image and be able to create something mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and have it last. I mean, something like this could last 100 years, like his bags. And uh, so I, I wanted to honor his vision with another craft. And, uh, and this chair was my way of doing that. And uh, now this is this the first chair you've made? No, I, I made the other chair for you, the, the riding arm chair. Oh, but it's yes. in the same theme. Well, that's as, in the offices here. And in it's Columbia. at the office. But, but this is the second chair. So I had a lot of help from the guy in Hendersonville. Um, so if there's any hobbyist out there that want to go outside their comfort zone to make something, he teaches a chair making class. Uh, it's Pennington Windsor Chairs, and he's awesome. He's got an incredible shop, and, uh, and he's kind of cut out of the same kind of cloth this guy is, and just, just loves creating stuff from, you know, raw materials, and then you know, using metal hand tools to make it. So um, it was an honor for me to do it. What did you think about it when you saw oh, it? Oh, I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, it's just unbelievable. I didn't have any idea what I was coming up I know. here for, you know. <laughs> but to see that and to know how it was made is just phenomenal. And 
the style of it, the uniqueness of it, Lee just did a phenomenal job. And the one thing about it that to me is more important than anything is it'll be a family heirloom yep. for generations and generations to come, Lee. And so that's that's what makes it special. People will be rocking in this chair in years to come. They'll be rocking. And I may be rocking like that country song. You need to that's sit right. down. You need to try it out. May I try, try it out? out? Try it I out. I don't need your rocking, rocking chair. chair. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Perfect fit. <laughs> it is a piece of art. It is it's wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Perfect Lee, fit. Thank you, brother. Oh, you're, it is you're absolutely welcome. phenomenal. And I'm going to invite you to deliver it to me down to Linville, Tennessee, and that way we can sign it and do all that stuff, and I'll show you around. Uh, that'd be great. That'd be great. I'll look forward to it. Where did you say you are going to put it? In the... I have a building that was Andrew Jackson visited in 1811, and it was uh, an old inn, and after he left, they kind of called it the Andrew Jackson Tavern, and I moved it to my farm. They were about to tear it down, and so this will find a home in that building by the fireplace, so that's where it'll be. Awesome. That's where that's it'll cool. be. So it'll Thanks. be a real spot. We'll Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thanks Larry. For coming, Colonel. Appreciate wow. it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Lee. Yeah. I had visions of when he sat down for the first time, he was going. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was your chair. Then. That was mine. <laughs> All right, get ready, uh, Darren and Brooke. As soon as I read this promise, we promise you'll get to do at least one song. Okay. <laughs> Mark thirteen thirty one. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words and this rocker shall not. <laughs> uh, I added that part. Um, 2 Peter 2.9, the Lord knows how to rescue godly people from their trials. Boy, I ought to put that on the refrigerator. The promise of the day. All right, Darren and Brooke Aldridge, sing us and we'll talk.
Have you smiled at somebody today? Yeah. I was just reading through the resume. Brooke, you're the four-time reigning IBMA Female Vocalist of the Year. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going for very, five? Very honored. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it just, you know, you never know from year to year. So always an honor to carry That's the That's right. Well, congratulations. She's always been mine, Larry. <laughs> He's a partial. So. Good move, guys. It said the, the first time you sang together, you harmonized on an old Baptist hymn. We did, yeah. Uh, when He Beckons Me Home, I think was the name of it. So. We will be right back. More Larry's Country Diner on the way. To Larry's Country Diner, or you know, Larry, I, I see blue lights out in the parking lot. Is it? I bl well, no, it's probably I bl Nadine. I, I think it's Nadine. You know, they tried to take her a license away from her, but they figured it was just better to give her an escort wherever she wanted. <laughs> There's Larry. I hear her music, but I don't yeah. see her. Yeah, she. Yeah, Nadine. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Sliding in. Came in on two wheels. Yeah. <laughs> I saw that. The steering and the spare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's cold out there. Whew. Well, how y'all doing? Good to see y'all. Cute couple. Cute she couple. said under her breath. <laughs> Cute couple. I was talking to Jimmy Fortune the other day about you. They love you. Y'all. I know, he's a good guy. Um, I was watching the news this morning. Ugh, I tell you, you know, you think your job is hard. Try being the interpreter, sign interpreter for Biden. <laughs> for who? Yeah. It's like, it's like, um, being tied to a chair watching a toddler play with a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Speak your mind, Nadine. Yeah. Don't hold back. If you're not conservative, y'all might want to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, why is it that archaeologists find all these human remains and it's always male or female and not one of them other 700 genders out there? Yeah. <laughs> Yep. I take this. They, me, you, two, some. Yeah. We. I don't know if there's a we in there. We'll be. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I, well, this country is divided it as is. I'm just glad I'm on the side that has the guns and that knows which bathroom to use. <laughs> Cards and letters to Nadine. <laughs> yeah, Homer said he didn't care about them mandates either because he don't date men. <laughs> mm. Circuses, I tell you, people are having a hard time finding help nowadays. These young people won't work. Circuses are having a hard time finding clowns because they're all going into politics. <laughs> <laughs> And while we're redefining, not you, Sam. <laughs> no, not. <laughs> while we're redefining everything, uh, Homer's renamed his Glock a cordless hole puncher. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of guns, he told his friend the other day this old man is trying to find a wife, and Homer told him he said, "You need to find a short woman and put your guns on the top shelf." And he said. What does that mean? He said, well, she might get you, but you'll hear her dragging a chair across the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Using gun control logic. Yeah. If you do away with fire extinguishers, there won't be any more fires. Uh. That's right. Think about it. I took, I took, I got a carrying permit. I went over there, I took lessons. Got out there and there was, man, there was a bunch of them too. This was, what, 2008 or so when everybody was buying yeah. guns, you know? <laughs> and I went in and I, I, was, I was doing my target shooting out front and there's 
all these guys was up around me and shells were popping out everywhere. And I'm trying to shoot and all this noise and cop comes over to me, we were at the police station, he comes over and he said, Mona, we're going for this section right here. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I got two holes in his head and you told me in the class, if, if you want to stop him, that's what you do. That's right. I got him right in the head. And I got it done. Got it done. Homer scared to death of me. <laughs> <laughs> for a good reason. All right. Heaven has a wall. Yes. And a gate and a good immigration policy. <laughs> Hell has open borders. <laughs> oh! oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'll probably get shot going out of here. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be waiting for you. In the... <laughs> I'm going to put the sign up. And it's going to say? When people bring up your past, tell them, Chief Jesus, drop the charges. Oh, that's good. I like that. Yeah, if you've talked to him. <laughs> he ain't dropping them if you don't talk to him. All right. You know who we got today? I do. Darren and Brooke. I know. And we have a third person over here with a fiddle. Fiddling around. <laughs> yes. What, what's your name? I'm Samantha Snyder. Samantha Snyder. <laughs> and a spider sat down beside Lexington, her. North Carolina. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, right down the road from them. Well, and do you travel with them? Yeah, I've been playing with them ever since. Uh, right slap in the middle of 2020. Right Very during the good. first year of the pandemic. So yeah. <laughs> we started in adversity and it bonded us together quickly. So. <laughs> Spend a lot of time together. Yeah. Well, good. Let's see if we can get another song out of y'all.
Right, Darren and Brooke Aldridge. Well, it's always good to be on the show, folks, and uh, good to be back. We got a special song that we wrote, and we know y'all love the Grand Ole Opry. Is that true? In oh, here? oh, yeah. Grand Ole Opry. Larry, this one, we, it's kind of a tribute to the Opry and from our experience getting to be backstage before we got to debut and during our debut and just a tribute to all the artists we love that's on there. In about four minutes, we tried to fit as much as we could in. <laughs> that was hard. Yeah. I hope y'all enjoy Grand Ole Circle.
Thank you, Mr. Black. No. No. <laughs> oh, go to Kavner's.com Kavner's or com. bootdiet.com as you finish your lunch. That was good chicken. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get us out of here with some music. Yeah. We're going to do one more that Brooke says I am, old-fashioned, but I'm proud of it. <laughs> That's right. Y'all folks old-fashioned like old ways, and uh, we just celebrated 13 years of marriage. Wow. It's gone by fast, hasn't it? Has. So, uh, hope <laughs> I want some us. boots, by the way. Yeah, she wanted a pair of those boots, because she's old-fashioned like that. <laughs> Get us out of here. We're hey, out of that's time. it for Larry's Country Diner. One more thing. Larry's Country Diner, where the cameras are always rolling, and we, we don't, don't care. care. Thank you, Darren. Thank you, Brooke. Thank you.